Hey class, Mr. Moynihan here with a help video on factoring trinomials. Uh, this is a challenging skill for a lot of students, and I thought I'd give you some more examples to uh, help you develop this, uh, this ability. So here's one of your problems. Uh, 7x squared plus 23x minus 20 equals 0. So the, the question is, uh, what are the solutions to this quadratic equation? Well, uh, mercifully, the 7x squared here is a prime term for its coefficient. So there's only one way to factor that, and the 7x and x, we factor it into its binomial factors. We then examine the factors of 20. So the factors of 20, let me go list here. You always have one in the number itself. You have 2 and 10, 4 and 5. And I believe that's it. Now, uh, we would normally then examine uh, which of these factors have a sum equal to this uh, middle term of 23. But keep in mind that one of our terms is being multiplied by 7. When we distribute to uh, kind of check the factoring uh, by, by distributing, you see that one of them will be multiplied by 7. So really, uh, we've got to consider 7 times some of these numbers. And if I, if I multiply for just randomly here to the 2, 2 times 7 will be 14. 14 and 10 combined give me 24, which is very close. So that's kind of a near miss. Uh, if I multiply the 7 times 4 here, I get 28 uh, and 5. And that it looks like it's it. 28 and 5 will give me um, the 23 that I need, right? So 4 and 5. The 4 needs to multiply by the 7. So when I distribute the 7, uh, 4 needs to interact with it, and the 5 uh, stays a 5. So it looks like I have my, my factors here. Let me get the signage properly. I need a positive 23 here, so I need positive 28, which is bigger, 7 times 4, minus the 5. And it looks like I factored it. Let me just make sure, because it's, it's useful here to check. If I uh, distribute this and this, I get 7x squared for the first distribution, plus 28x for the second, distributing the negative 5, I get negative 5x minus 20, and like terms here combined, 7x squared plus 23x minus 20, which, what well, do you know, that's what we started with. So we have factored it properly. Using the zero uh, property of multiplication, if this chunk here times this chunk here equals zero, then the solution would simply be uh, both of those individual terms set equal to zero. So let me clear out from where I was doing my checking, because that's an important step, but uh, oops, not really strictly part of the procedure. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, anyway, uh, so we'll just leave this aside for now. So uh, let's see, set, setting this term here equal to zero, 7x minus 5. And then this term here equal to 0, x plus 4 equals 0. This one's fairly bloodless. And I get x equals negative 4 is one of my solutions. My other solution, if I add 5, I get 7x equal to 5 divided by 7, and x equals 5 sevenths. Now in algebra 2, one of the skills you'll develop is, uh, is then graphing quadratic equations. And from here, you can tell that one of your solutions is negative 4, and your other solution is a bit less than 1, 5 sevenths. So somewhere like this. And a parabola passing through there would look something like that. And if you graph this thing, you'll see something along those lines. So there's one example of how to factor a quadratic. Let's take a look at a, uh, another one. Here we have 2x squared minus 13x plus 20 uh, equal to 0. So once again, a prime factor here for its coefficient. So that's going to decompose into 2x and x. We then examine the factors of 20 again. So let's see. Oops, factors of 20, we got uh, 1 and 20 again, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. Same list as before. Uh, this time, we've got to get a total of negative 13, right? So keep in mind that none of these directly 
sum or, or difference to that total, but one of our numbers is going to be doubled, right? So let's see, if I double uh, some of these numbers, would that work? If I double the four, I would get an eight, right? An eight and five, hey, gives me 13. So my first guess happened to be right, and, and yours may not when you factor these. So keep in mind, it takes a bit of perseverance and moving through those stuff points and really getting those, um, you know, those parts of your brain developed to allow you to reason through each of the candidates to find the, the single pair that does work. In this case, it's eight and five, or four and five, kind of eight. So in order to get that eight, I need to multiply two times the four, right? So two times four will give me eight, and then I need the five here. So two and four, to get negative 13, I need both negatives. So negative eight minus five will give me negative 13. If you're not confident whether or not that's correct, uh, distribute it out, so let's see, just to check here. 2x minus 5 times x minus 4. Will this give me the original problem? We're distributing here. 2x squared minus 8x. Distributing here. Minus 5x. Negative times negative. Positive 20. Combining like terms gives me negative 13x. 2x squared minus 13x plus 20. Is that what I started with? Yes, it is. So, very nice. Solve by setting each factor individually equal to 0. 2x minus 5 equals 0. 4 equals 0, adding 4 to both sides yields 1 solution of 4, adding 5 to each side gives me a solution of x equals 5 halves as well. And again, just to preview graphing this from algebra 2, or perhaps reviewing this from algebra 1, uh, x equals 4 is somewhere, let's say, there. 5 halves is, uh, let's see, 2.5. Five, so somewhere in this vicinity, I'd say. So a parabola with something.